Welcome back, boys and girls. This is episode 50, uh, was it 59? 59? Jesus, I can't remember anymore. Uh, of your hump day podcast, Abe Bourbon. Bourbon, poured. Red Bull, mine's already popped. I didn't pop on yet. You got a freshie? Mm-hmm. Spray your screen. <laughs> okay. And Ooh. we got a great show for you today. Um, Sponsored by Lexington Bourbon again, because our liquor store is out of Makers. Yeah, I wonder, if it's, I wonder if it's our liquor store or Makers' fault. I don't know. It's a big liquor store. You think all they had you know? was uh, Makers Forty Six, and that's it's fine, but it's not worth the price. No, it's I, if I'm going to spend that much, I'd rather I'd rather get ten other bourbons. But Lexington, though, if you guys haven't tried it, now I don't want to piss off our sponsors, but yeah. we it's, love it. It's good bourbon. Mm. Uh, if you like Makers, it's a very similar type uh, feel to it. Anyway, uh, let's talk about. We're going to get into a few things today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the gaming industry as a whole, but let's talk about what we have been doing because we did a hilarious recording last night. Yeah. And uh, we're very excited to share it with you. This is the game I was really looking forward to doing. <laughs> yeah. Th- yeah. This is, uh, took it took some hilarious rigging of the PS4 to get it to work with the Elgato, but I think we've got a system now. And it's really not that bad to set up now that we got yeah, it's it. Not but bad at all. It was brutal to figure out. Uh, Double fisting with some wine and some. Uh, yeah, I would have put, put the wine now first, although I already drank some bourbon. Um, so it's a game called PT, and mm-hmm. it was a demo on PlayStation Four. Uh, I believe when it was launched, they weren't even sure if it was a demo or just like a standalone well, thing. Yeah, the PT is st- stands for playable teaser. Oh. Or, so it's like a teaser for a Silent Hill game that's in development or might be in development. And boy, something. do I hope they do it just exactly like that with they more s- levels or whatever you want to do. I don't know how. But. They set the bar extremely high because that game is fucking awesome. It is. Uh, it's not awesome. It's because it's fucking scary. Yeah, and we hated played. it. We hated it. But, but it's really in a, good. In a good way. We don't like scary games. So if you like scary no. games, you should go get that t- today. I, and it's, dude, for a free game, I mean, the replayability, you could play that for like yeah, four I, hours. Yeah, I guess like the instance... Instances change every time you play it. Oh yeah, so we wouldn't see yeah, the same well, thing I'll never, twice. I'll never go back in there. No, I mean I wouldn't. <laughs> that game's uh, dead I would, to me. I would not play that game by myself. <laughs> nope, that I, I was scary enough. We turned the lights off, and yeah. you, if you want to hear us scream like little girls, then th- this is the video. I for mean, you. there was times in that game where it like I could feel the goosebumps like Absolutely. moving up and down my arm. They did such a good job with the audio. If you're gonna play the game, put, put headphones put, put, on. Don't be a man and put the headphones on. And even if you're a woman, be a man and put the headphones. Turn on. Turn the lights off. Uh, put the headphones on. We tell people to be a man as we. Ah! Yeah. Oh my god. No, that might be louder. The first time we fucking screamed, our fucking aunt, or what the hell's this thing called? Um. The what the preamp. Oh amp yeah. The, uh, I don't preamp. I guess. I know nothing. That red. I think that it's, called, red thing I think it's our, actually called an interface. That red thing we plug our mics into. <laughs> right. It fucking was turning colors. That I've never seen it do. Yeah, we spiked the mic really bad, and, and then Spunky was freaking out. Adam's dog. Because... Yeah, every time we scream, Spunky would just wake up and start barking for no really fucking reason. I know. I I, I even watched the video yet. I I saw like when you were just editing it quickly, uh, and it. It's not good. No, it's scary. But you guys should watch it because it is hilarious. If you want to see us be little girls, I mean, we it got to the point where we didn't want to even like use the controller, w- right? Like we we kept giving it back to each other because no one wanted to be holding. I was the perfectly controller. content not playing the game. Oh, it was terrible to play. It's way worse. I think you played like the first twenty minutes. Maybe. Yeah, and I, when that when that thing uh, got me, I, I had I, my nerves were frayed. I had enough. Damn. But like there were times where like. We would run the opposite direction and hide in a corner, and we would, wouldn't even peek yeah. around the corner. The you first time you peek around the corner, and that fucking chick is standing there. Oh my god! Or it makes you stare into a like into the cracked, cracked door. open door. Such bullshit. Or it, and the, the thing that is really scary about it is it is photorealistic. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the most realistic looking games I have I ever mean, seen. It it's, it's simple. It's it a doesn't simple... have a lot going on, which right. makes sense. But it's you yeah. know what I, you know what's cool about it too. And I was thinking about this. I could have my dad play that game because there's literally you might give him a hard time. two controls, but he loves scary shit. Does He'd be he fine, yeah. Uh, but like that's what's kind of cool about it. You literally can walk and zoom, and that's pretty much all you can do. It's and, fucked up, and it's it's just brilliant the way that they you you're basically going through the same hallway like repeatedly, but every time it's different, and it's like you can't escape this house, and you can hear the radios kind of telling you some background of what happened, um, so you know kind of like why you're. Yeah, the place is haunted. I don't know. I don't want to give. Too I wonder. Much away. I wonder how much of that is just a distraction to like divert your attention from something that's going on behind you or mm-hmm. in front of you. I love when the radio guy because he's talking. They do such a good job, like lulling you to sleep. Like they're patient yeah. with their tricks. Like 
the radio guy comes in, he's talking about the accident and a man, he murdered Bobby. He, he's talking about that all, like for the first four times you walk through this hallway. And then at some point he just goes, turn around. And you're like, wait, was he, did he, did he, yeah. was that the same? And then he goes, I said, turn around. And you're just like, oh God. <laughs> we just run. We, we don't ran. listen to him. <laughs> it's too scary. It was so good. Oh, uh, and then there's like writing in different places. But I was thinking about it. Well, when you turn that corner, yeah, and like the the blur, you know how like your eyes adjust, like you were saying, when you see that creature, it looks fucking real. That's yeah. why it's so scary. It's, it's not like it's insane. Oh, and, the, the, and the she's bathroom. tall. I don't understand why she's so fucking tall. I don't know. Cause she's coming from the other. I don't know. And it, it, like you're afraid to like in like the lighting thing. Like it does this thing. Like when you come around the corner, like it's dark. But then, like, it, it's almost like it lets your eyes adjust so you can start seeing, like, objects appear, like, the outline of them. As, right. As you, would, as you would look down a dark hallway, you could start seeing things a little clearer. And it's so fucking creepy. Yeah, it was uh, it was not a good experience. No, it wasn't. I didn't like it and at I all. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Cause, yeah. um, it's going to be a lot easier to watch a YouTube video than it is to play, I'll tell you that I don't much. know. It's gonna, the jump scares in that were just fucking yeah. ridiculous. Well, if you put, you put headphones on, maybe, but it's not going to be the same as sitting in a dark room and playing it by yourself. It but, is uh, awful. Hearing us scream like, uh, I was going to say little bitches, but um, yeah, that's pretty like much little, what we were. Little, little children uh, is, is funny. Yeah, uh, we have some funny lines. And that's a great game. If you have PS4... Yeah, it's if you no like scary games, or you just just even if you, even don't, if you don't just play just, it, uh, it's, it's it's worth that. Yeah, experience. just just play it on low volume because it's kind of a puzzle kind of game too, in a mm-hmm. way. And they're subtle puzzles. It's not like it's not like every hallway is a, a puzzle that you have to find an object, but it's like you have to figure something out to kind of get to the next stage. Sometimes you just need to walk down the hallway, and sometimes yeah. you need to actually do stuff. But it's wow, fucked. it's fucked up. It, it I mean, really, it is already. And I mean this. It's the best horror game I've ever played. Exactly, and yeah. It's one of the most scary things I've ever seen in anything. Movies, like, it's, you know. It's unbelievable. I get the Exorcist over it by a little bit, but when the full game comes out, we'll see. If the, they set such a high bar for the full game. I know. I don't think they'll... Because how do you pull it off, too? Do you do different stories with different homes, or do you have to do, like, one consistent story? That would be cool. Yeah, because I feel like one consistent story might be get boring, you know what yeah. I mean? Whereas if you had um, different stories, maybe even, like, three... But you could still have like well, there could be an upstairs or and then chapters like that would be cool like ten ten fifteen bucks a chapter. I'll tell you what I hate, and I mean I hate uh, horror movies and and games. I don't hate horror movies. I hate horror games. I just don't think they're any good. I, I will I will probably buy that game. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch you play it. No, what do we we have to? Fuck, we're gonna have to record you. Listen, you're the like, one that started this. You told I, me you wanted to play this. I was like, fuck. I that, thought the I first hate Dead that. Space was scary because I hate yeah. those jump scares that you know are coming are bullshit. Mm-hmm. And this one, you don't know when they're coming because you would think like, oh, it, something's gonna happen, and then nothing happens because you're doing right. you're repeating your uh, your actions over and over yeah. again. And and they're kinda, they're like, so good at like. Making you think that's where the scare is coming, yeah, and it doesn't it d- come, it doesn't and then all come. of a sudden you put yeah. your, you know, you go walk to the table, and the, you know, shit pops out. Yeah, at one point we were just walking, and something grabbed oh my us God, from that behind. Was so scary! I was like, I, "What the that, fuck?" That was the most scared I was the whole day. No, the one where um, it just, it just came out of like the the safety door or whatever. It just started yeah, yeah. lunging towards us. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, that was, uh, oh, God. I can't wait to, I can't. And yeah. there's so much weird stuff that goes on where it's like, it looked like the PS4 froze at one point, and they do it on purpose. Yeah, that was cool. Um, yeah, that's very cool. Anyway, check that video out. It's on our YouTube channel. We'll, yes. we'll be by the time this recording comes out. Um, and check out the game. And check out the game for sure. And we, we haven't really recorded too much else. That was our main thing we did we got last an FTL night. video again. Yeah, we got a longer FTL video. Yeah, it's yeah, almost it's... two hours, and... Do we do you any beat Hearthstone? FTL. I did beat FTL. You bastard. Beat I know. I, I know. I'm excited about that. Um, it's so much fun to jump right back in, though. Like, yeah. I, it, a lot of times with games like that, like... Um, we got to play on normal difficulty. I know. That's the next thing I'm going to do. And hard. Um, I'll never play it on hard. I hate playing games like, like yeah. that on hard. It just feels, like, so cheap, you know? Um, but, yeah, it, it's very cool. The sh- the, playing the different ships play totally different, too, and, like... Every even with the same ship, every playthrough is so different. You have to be able to be flexible, you, you know. And it's it, that game is. If you have an iPod, an iPad, and you don't have FTL, you're crazy. It's the best game on iPad outside of Hearthstone. maybe Hearthstone. If you I, like that kind of game better, you know. I really, I really like Hearthstone. Yeah, well, I'm not saying. Oh, you know I'm not saying for me. I'm just saying. If you, like some le- people don't like card. Type after doing game. the last couple of arenas, I think I have more fun not doing the arenas. Hmm. I like arenas a lot. Yeah, that's my. That's I don't know. I just like using the, the comfort of my own deck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's cool. I think you learn a lot in arenas, yeah. though. And we, we're gonna do a paper, papers, please video. 
Yeah, yeah, that's right. We got to yeah, do that. We haven't, or maybe we'll switch it. I don't know. We'll All right, let's it. talk uh, Nintendo Direct. Oh, the last thing I want to ask you because it's going to be over. Um, final thoughts on Halo Five? Um, this will they'll be gone. Okay, yeah, I know. How sad is that? I don't know. It's going to be hard to go back to Master Chief Collection. I'm excited right? though. I think that it is arguably the most fun I had all year in any game. I mean, that's how good it was. I thought, Your I thought it was 2014. 2014. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was that good. It, it's, it just plays, it plays like they've been polishing it for, you know what I, Like, you know how Dota has like a certain level of polish to it. That's what it feels like to me. It's just so polished in every way. Yeah. Uh, there's little tidbit of things that I can nitpick, but I think that it's a year away from release. So I'm hoping they're going to fix the little nitpicks. Yeah, and... I, can, I can think like in Halo four, I didn't really use any, vehicles except for the the mech thing mm-hmm. but i think in halo 5 i, pro- I probably will never touch a vehicle because i like shooting and well, that's running. coming that's a ballsy statement because you are a vehicle whore at Halo Master Chief but, but I, I'm not so much in um <laughs> halo 4 yeah yeah the mech's cool the mech was in halo 3 i think was where it first uh, yeah and that came big out. that big like valley map uh-huh valhalla yeah um i don't know I just, I just can't, I can't believe, I can't imagine what that game's going to look like. I mean, like. think about, we, we've only seen, like, four maps, um, half the guns, none of the vehicles, none of the big maps. We haven't seen any of, and like, we're, you know there's going to be a Blood Gulch or, They added, know. on their Friday update, they added a new level or whatever. We don't know what they added. Yeah, we, it was, we it was kinda, found it. The wording was weird. Yeah. But we don't know if they put, like, any weapons. Um, probably not going to do a video for it. Yeah, just but if, like if, worth it, if but. we find, like, a shotgun or something, then we'll, we'll do it. But I know, I wish. I'm really disappointed they didn't show the shotgun off. You know, I think they've showed it in their videos, though. I think I've seen yeah. it. Um, I just want to see how it works with Sprint and how yeah. quickly you can pull it up. Yeah, it'd be interesting, for sure. Because it's going to change a lot of shit. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think to balance the shotgun, if I had to guess, they'll probably make it lower ammo. So yeah. it's not like... Cause I, wanna, she can't just I can't like wait to run up on somebody's slide... Pop yeah. up in front of them, shoot. Guys, I've been waiting to use the slide just for the heck. I know. Right, I mean, the really slide no could be fun with the sword. You could probably do it with the sword, but probably. You but there's don't no point because you're so fast with the sword. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I have no problem saying a Halo game sucks. Some of them I've loved, some of them I haven't loved. But you know, a Halo is one of my, maybe my favorite game franchise outside of Zelda. But this one is so yeah. fucking good. This might be my favorite first-person shooter ever that I've played since um, Modern Warfare Two. It's that good. And, and people, it changes shit enough that makes it, like, right, People exciting. are so silly because they think they see it, and it's got jet boosts and, all, all, like, all these little things. But and it they still think, feels like Halo. Yeah, and, and that's the key is it still feels like Halo. It doesn't feel like Call of Duty. People who say it has Call of Duty because it's aimed on sites is the dumbest thing ever. I can't even argue, I can't even get into that. But, like, it's not just that. It's 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 all the little things they do right. It's it's the map design. It's the way it feels. It's mm-hmm. the floating. It's the way you can grab ledges, like, and it feels right. Um the balance of the guns, which is something I love that Halo does. You have two guns and yeah, you know all the guns. That's going to be tough to go back to a, 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 the games that don't have balance of guns. Yeah. Like to pick up an assault rifle SMG. And it's interesting that they, yeah, they've, they've one of the things they've done really well in Halo 5, every gun is a viable gun. There's not yeah. a single gun that sucks. And in Halo 2, like, or Halo 3, especially, like the assault rifle is so bad that like yeah. you have to have BR starts because it's stupid to have an assault rifle. Where I'm not that I like playing BR start games, but I don't think every game should be battle rifle start. If you don't play Halo, it means like the longer range gun start. Yeah. Um, because it, it to me, it decreases the using like it decreases the craziness of getting power weapons and it just makes everyone like. Getting a power weapon isn't that big of a deal because everyone's got a battle rifle. You know what I mean? It's, it makes it makes people not learn the maps. So I like being able to do both. And in this, mm-hmm. the thing that I have to get used to more than anything else is sometimes I need to take out my assault rifle. And I can't get used to that because it, yeah. no other Halo game, you do not take out a gun if you have the battle rifle unless it's like a rocket or a shotgun, you know, or sword or yeah, something. It's going to be but, tough. Um, I think the jumping down, when, when somebody jumps down first and they land and you jumping and hovering, I think mm-hmm. losing that is going to suck because... Those are kills, and now they're not kills anymore. It's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, I love the subtleness of jumping and hovering just for a second, but yeah. it's not overpower. Like you shouldn't be able to hover for ten seconds. It's just like three, you know, a second and a half, and you've got to finish the guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's amazing, and the graphics are really good. For, you know, for a game coming out in ten months. Yeah, and it's people are always like, oh, it's seven twenty. People, it's gonna be ten eighty p, sixty frames a second. It's a fucking beta. They coming out a year early. You know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I think it's amazing. I cannot, I, I have not been this excited. Like, like I said, like I don't have a major complaint about it. I've got a little nitpick things, but I don't have a single major complaint about it, which is shocking because Halo 4, I had tons of major complaints, even though 
I thought the backbone of it was a pretty good game, but I thought they screwed up a lot of yeah things, you know. Um, yeah, that's all I really got there. So let's talk Nintendo Direct. Okay. I really didn't pay attention. I paid a little bit of attention to this. It's just, it was very boring. I mean, they announced some hardware stuff, the 3DS um, XL. People are kind of pissed because the new Nintendo 3DS, the smaller one's not coming to America, which makes no sense to me. Really? Just the XL. Yeah. Um, I'd be pissed because they, this is like the third fucking edition of the 3DS, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I believe so. I don't know. I lose track. And some I games the, don't work on, some 3DS yeah. don't. Work which on. is ridiculous yeah it was it was um smash brothers was the first one i don't know what else doesn't work on it but yeah so like i can't get smash brothers for mine what, right it was smash brothers i don't know i don't want to i don't know if it was smash I don't, i'm not sure it was I'm smash sure. brothers but there's there's some right there's some game that's like the first game that doesn't work on anything else which is kind of lame like yeah. release a new system if that's what you want to do um and call it the fucking game boy yeah that'd be nice too what a sell them call them game boys stop using the 3d effect it's fine. It's neat in some games, but who cares? It just kills the battery. Uh, they showed some Majora's Mask gameplay, which I think a lot of people are excited about because um, a lot of people, there's a cult that can't help but tell everybody how Majora's Mask is better than Ocarina of Time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in the comment sections, there's people out there that have to say, no, Majora's Mask is better than Ocarina of Time. I think they're both amazing games, uh, but that's pretty cool. That That's definitely like the... the, the uh, Redhead stepchild of Ocarina of Time when they're and both probably as good as and each there's other. There's a lot of people that fucking hate that game too. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know a lot of people, but some people. It, it, I mean, it's a it's a great game. I like Ocarina of Time. I mean, people like Majora's Mask of the because of the darker kind of theme of it. Mm -hmm. But I kind of like the theme of Ocarina of Time. That's what Zelda's supposed to be. I don't know. Um, they're both great. A lot of the other stuff is portable stuff that I just don't care about. Yeah. Um, I, I like Kirby and the Rainbow Curse gameplay trailer. You'd probably love that if you had a 3DS, but probably you're not gonna buy one for it. It's not that kind of game. No. I think they showed that the new. Um, I think they showed a little bit of the Mario uh, Make Your Own Level thing again. I could be wrong about that. I don't know. I think the internet fucking crapped out here again. Did it? Uh, the one thing that was really cool was they showed off um, Xenoblade Chronicles, which is like a big, massive. Uh, JRPG, it's like a 3D exploration, kind of. Like, it looks a lot like you know, like a Dragon Chase, or more like a Final Fantasy. Yeah. Um, my only the thing that kills me about seeing that trailer is the artwork is so incredible, uh, and like you could tell that the artists who are behind it were like amazing. And I'm just thinking to myself, if the Nintendo released a fucking system that had legit hardware, how amazing would that game look? You know what I'm saying? Because they're basically doing it on a last gen system. Yeah. That's really what it is. Um. They're fucking idiots. Yeah. Neither of us are ever going to buy it, but no. the first game, you know, great reviews, but didn't sell great as JRPGs are. It, it's it's crazy I've, that they... I have no interest in JRPGs anymore. I've never really been into them. Um, I liked I liked Final Fantasy Thirteen, but that was it. That was it. I was like, this, this, I'm done. Yeah, Final Fantasy Thirteen. I never played it. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. I, was, I was on the... I think I was on the... I think that game was mixed reviews. I was more of the higher... I thought it was really good. Yeah. Yeah, Final Fantasy X was like the last I'm not JRPG like, I really played. Final Fantasy like, all X the way is like two times better than yeah. 13. That game's amazing. X is amazing. Uh, I heard X2 is actually really good, too. They, they released a remastered version. I just, I know I'll never play I it. I just but, don't want to, um, like, I just don't, there's no, there's not enough story in there for me, for me to put 60 hours or 100. I can put 100 hours in Fallout and Skyrim, no problem. Yeah, see, I think a lot of people, I, I, I don't have that, really a that quirkiness course in the game, but I think like, a lot of people would say that the JRPGs have more of the story. No, I think you think uh, so. It depends on the game. You're just random encounters, and like you're That's not really true. doing anything. I, I guess I guess it's different because in in like uh, Fallout or Skyrim, they have like a very singular story yeah. of, and in JRPGs, it's more about meeting the the different characters and what their backstories are. Um, yeah. Fallout, I played Nino. Um, Nino Nino Nino, Nino, uh, was it Cooney? Yeah, Nino Cooney. Yeah, Wrath of the White Witch. It was. I could tell it was so cool. It looked like a fucking anime show or something. The artwork was really cool. I could tell that the story was neat. I just couldn't get it. I played it for like an hour or two, which is totally not even giving it a fair shot. But I just couldn't get into it. And I just, I really haven't played RPGs, which is makes me sad. I mean, I know that when the new Zelda comes out, which is basically, and I think they're trying to make it like a cross between Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and yeah. Dragon Age Inquisition. So. That I will play because I'm, you know, I'm obsessed with Zelda games. But 
I, w- I wish I could get back into them because I know, the, you know what I mean? Like Dragon Age. I just, I, I wish I could wait. play that. I might start it this weekend. Yeah, I hope you do. I'll definitely pop over and like, you know, mess around. My but. thing is I just get so into them and then I just want to do every side quest. I want to collect everything. And I'm normally not like that type of person, but those type of games I love. Like the Fallout and the yeah, they, Skyrim. Yeah, they say that's what's cool about Dragon Age is uh, the plot's great and everything. It's cool, yeah. but you could like play for 50 hours and never even like see a main quest because that's what they I'm have really, just crazy That's what stuff. I'm really good at, just avoiding the main quest. Just, yeah. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's. I guess what those games pride themselves on. Um, I definitely like that. I don't know. I wish I could get into those games again. I really. Do you ever do. play like the Fallout games or anything like? That? I played Fallout, uh, w- the original Fallout, and I got like two hours into like three it. Three or the original, original Fallout. Uh, I was probably my third year near, so maybe like five years yeah, ago. Yeah, probably Fallout Three. Fallout Three. Okay, so yeah, it's Fallout Three. Um. And it was good, but I, I like I could tell that like this is a great game. Yeah, I just couldn't get into playing yeah. it every night. I don't know. See, I, I'm, I, you know, I hated my job too, so that was a big part of it. I'm one of those people like I'll just I'll pick like the farthest point on the map from where I'm at, and I'll just walk there. If it takes me two hours to walk there, I'm gonna do it. It's gonna be really cool to see Zelda like that. Yeah. They say all the mountains in the distance, you just like Skyrim. Well, hopefully, there's enough to, so. shit in the world because yeah. that's gonna be my fucking game if there is. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I mean, you know, it's not gonna be Skyrim. It's just no, not, I'm okay with that. But it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be cool to see. Like that would be a really like new thing for Zelda. So, mm-hmm. and it fits the world fits so well because they love having like random towns with little story quests, and you go and you do stuff. So like it I fits just, the world really well. I really hope the, the NPCs that you run into in Zelda talk to you. Like I don't, I don't mind Zelda or Link not talking. Yeah, I wonder when they will do my, that. Like the antagonist and um, or the protagonist and um, Skyrim and Fall, they don't talk. So it's right. Simple. But I can't do bleeps and bloops and shit. Yeah, for forty hours. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. I mean, the flip side of that is the voice acting has to be good, and it's always that, or or it's worse than it's really having that really like rating. Japanese or Asian like like high like uh-huh. when it pops up. It's, I I can't I won't be able to do it. Yeah, like yeah, it, that it's cute for a while, and then it's just fucking annoying. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind reading stuff, but. Um, well, I don't mind reading either. Yeah, it's like, definitely follow stuff. You got to make choices. Right, it'd definitely be better though if it was more of like a serious thing, and it, that doesn't mean it has to be dark. Yeah, it just means it has to be like not like because there are some Zelda games where like you're actually kind of in the story. It's very yeah. cool, and then like you'll go to a you know a town, and you're just like Jesus Christ. You yeah, know I, mean? I, don't, I'm not, I, don't, I don't need like a two page monologue. I just need like a little bit of like right. it just adds feel to the game and. Mm-hmm. Like, and if you're going to have a game with that much scope, give me some depth. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I can't wait. I can't wait to see more because they basically show nothing of the Zelda I game. I know, there's nothing. They showed them go through a, a forest. Nothing, and nothing in was direct in. about it? Uh, no, uh, which I was surprised about, but that's what it is. That's really all we have to say, I think. Yeah. On the only thing else I had direct, was the Amiibo care. stuff. Like, now Amiibos will unlock levels in certain games. Which is kind of bullshit because the games already are on the di- or the levels are already on the disc. But you have to buy the amiibo to unlock them. I don't them. think that'll last. People freak out too much. That's over that. bullshit. I think amiibo is just classic. Like I don't mean to offend anybody out there, but like stupid people spending money on something they don't need. Yeah, <laughs> it really, it's dumb. And like, like listen, if you're getting them, if you're getting them because you want to collect them, that's cool. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, although I think your money would be better spent getting like a legit. Yeah, uh, statue, whatever you want to call them, that like is much higher quality because they're just cheap, shitty plastic things, and they add nothing to the yeah, gameplay. The only thing that you, the only thing that they add, think about like you know, think about like this, like the only thing that they add, like you said, is things that they took out on purpose. That's yeah, bullshit. They're withholding from you. Can you imagine paying fifteen dollars for an extra level of Mario? Because that's what you're gonna right. do. Oh, well, how about this? That's too. a lot of money. Like, right. Think and, of and, it as and, DLC. And it's funny because Nintendo refuses to do DLC for the most part. They, are, they did a little bit. They're of Mario absolutely Kart, doing DLC but, right yeah, now. Yeah, that's what it is. And and when we play Smash Brothers, one of the things that they talk about is that you can have like Donkey Kong and. Whole, like learn your fight style, which I think is bullshit to begin it's with. But fucking, you can't but, use that character on that thing. You just you watch him fight. But, but then you watch him fight. But it's fucking. But dumb. my point is, why can't I just bring my gamepad over or yeah. a save game or better yet, have it in the fucking cloud like yeah. everybody else? You know what I mean? Like if I if that feature existed for um, Mortal Kombat X, let's say, and we both had it for Xbox One, you mm-hmm. could be damn sure that I could come over to your house, log myself in with your account. And my guy could fight your guy without a goddamn plastic yeah. shitty toy, it's, you know? It's a little shady by Nintendo. I don't like it. And 
I just, I mean, they cut those things cost like fifteen bucks. And they're they're shitty looking. And like you, if you're gonna buy the for the most part, think, some of them are cool. I but. think like the Kirby game has it, and I think there's another game, but yeah. like you're paying fifteen dollars for one. They're just shoving one, it one level. Yeah, they're shoving it. If down you're your buying throat. it for that reason, and again, if you're buying it because you want to collect them and put them on your wall, that's different. But f- as far as like adding to the gameplay, but what the if hell? If you see does an advertisement add? said like this amiibo unlocks the level, do not buy it. Yeah, seriously, don't Speak, support this that. This one bullshit. of those. This is one of those things you got to vote with your wallet because it's already on the desk that you paid for. Yeah, I will never buy one of those pieces of shit. I might buy the Mega Man one. It'd be cool to have a Mega Man love statue. I wouldn't use it for an amiibo. You have a Mega Man statue. <laughs> Kinda. It's a fucking red Mega Man. What the fuck is a red Mega Man? I don't Mega know. Man? He's got all sorts of costumes. Kind of makes See, sense. See, that's my point, though. For like 30 bucks, which is like only twice as much as amiibo, you could probably get like a really cool Mega Man or statue for, instead for, of a fucking... Or for $4 more, you can just get a Loot Crate subscription. That's true. Feels like it's been forever since I got my last one. Yeah, it kind of does. December is just so far away. Yeah, I suppose that's I think true. It, I think it comes this week. All right, let's talk about... Uh, we talked about our games of the year last year. Let's talk about IGN's game of the oh year for God. PS4. You really enjoyed this. This is one of the worst things that uh, has happened in a long time. IGN, our favorite place for freelancing, freelance writing, yeah. has fucking done the unthinkable. Every like, I'm a big podcast listener. I uh, listen to, like, most gaming sites listen to their uh, podcast. And everybody says when they're talking the game of the year, they're like, oh, well, um, I'll, we can't put that game in because it's, re- it's a remake or a remaster. Or even a lot of places won't do, um, like, Game of Thrones, or not Game of Thrones, like Walking Dead. They don't consider each episode. Unless all the episodes are out in a year, that, and then they consider it a game because they want the finished product. IGN, on their PS4, like side made the last of us a ps3 game that came out in 2013 their 2014 P- playstation game of the year so it's a two-time winner <laughs> two two years in a row without a sequel <laughs> they, they made a remake yeah that's crazy of a game because i'm okay if, i'm okay with if them. it's some sort of new thing that you know they like we said like it's it's not even like a collection of games. It's, it's one not, game. Yeah. It's a slightly updated well, it, version. I, it, it's a, it's the same fucking does, game as last Dragon's year. Dragon's Age not win too. Well, that's because it's four. a lot of people are saying why not Grand, why not Grand Theft Auto or why not you know, yeah same fucking thing. You would think that they give it to Gra- Dragon's Age yeah. though, because you know it was their Dragon's Age was their game of the year. Right. So like how how if that's their how game of the, the year? How is the best how, game not? Right, it's on PS4. Yeah. So why is it not the game of the year? How do you say a game that was two? It's two years old, is the best game on your system? That is so stupid. That's like saying like that's like if James Cameron was like he was like I'm gonna re release Titanic in theaters and then it won an Academy Award the same fucking year. It would never happen. Yeah. It's, like it's so stupid. Like people yeah, always who votes on this. The editors or the yeah. freelance people you know, that you know, they, they, what, they, right. they send $30 to in the mail. For I really it. wonder who does vote on it. because here's I don't know because Greg Miller and Colin Moriarty must have been out before these votes went in. They yeah, had to have been. I don't know. Because I can't see Gre- or like Colin Moriarty you know, allowing You know what's funny to, to me about it is how much you want to bet a lot of the people that voted for it played it for the first time on PS4. That's and that's fine. Like I what, said No, but but that's fine if you're me or you. That's yeah. not fine if you work for no. IGN's PlayStation department. You should have played The Last and, of Us. And, I understand that they can't play every game. I get yeah. that. But you need to play the 2013 game of the year yeah. for PS3. If you're a legit uh video game article writer, you need to have played that game, you know. This just sets such a bra- bad precedent for games. Like there were so many podcasts I listened to when somebody would say they would bring it up there, like what what games when they're talking about PS4 game, they're like what what games are great, and then people would be like The Last of Us, and they'd be like, shut the fuck up, that game is two years old, we don't right. that doesn't even count, you can't add it, and then IGN did that, it's so bad because it didn't even like add anything meaningful, it just so what happens it. if it comes out next year? Is it gonna win next year too? They could just re-release it, make it another HD HD game. Yeah, I think uh, I don't think it sets any bad precedents because I don't think anyone respects what IGN says. It's just unbelievable. It's so depressing how far IGN has gone down the shitter. Like that is yeah, just, there's there's a Master huge... Chief Collection that didn't like that shouldn't even be an option viable option for the Xbox One to be right. a game of the year. Right, and at least Master even Chief if it Collection worked, is there's no fucking right, way. At least, at least Master Chief Collection has four games yeah. that are all updated. Like it's they actually like did something, not just like. 
turned on anti aliasing and re released it, you and know. It, and everybody wants to take video they want people in the public to take video games seriously. They want they they want people to see it as art and I think it is art. And they want their journalism to be re- considered right up there with like the worldly news. When you give when you give an award to the same game two years in a row off a of re release, it, it's no, nobody's gonna take that seriously. Yeah. Like I don't understand why you would do it. You know what people are gonna react to, and then then they then they publish an article entitled "It was like people are upset of our 2014 PlayStation Game of the Year." It's like yeah, well, so I, you're gonna piss I mean, people probably, off even more. But it, the, the, the thing is, that's what they're and just then the article, they're just turning into Gamespot because that's all Gamespot does is they purposely write articles. To the piss article people off. had like 15 words on it. Right. Well, that, that's and then there was a video, do, yeah. and then there was that clickbait shit in the bottom. Yeah, and that's all it is because all they get paid for advertising clicks, and that's what Gamespot does. If you go to Gamespot's like top ten stories any given week, it's like a story about resolution uh, in some game being 1080p versus 900p. Uh, it's there's a uh, one on PSN being down or Xbox Live being down. Um, there's something you know. I mean, like it's like all of like the the most like the dumbest conversations that you could have that's what they put on there every se- and they, GameSpot is the worst dude they will put like 10 of them in a week it's fucking ridiculous and IGN must be like wow GameSpot's getting a lot of clicks they well, must you know it's it's I, I, it's like they got lazy with like cause since Greg Miller and Colin Moriarty already left they're the they're the PlayStation people it's like well PlayStation didn't have any games this year and these guys their opinions are gone so, like, what the fuck do we do? They just ask, like, editors what games they play? I bet you they just voted on it internally. That's insane that they let that happen. Yeah. it's. I uh, think I'm more upset than most people, but to put a yeah, game, really it's care, a re-release, but, like... I mean, I think it's retarded, but so, I don't really care. I, I I just can't believe that they would do that. Like, yeah. that's so insulting, like, the to, only... like, uh, Infamous. Like, they gave Infamous a great review this year. Yeah. And that's... A... Well, it should have been, been Dragon Age. That's what it should have been. Yeah. And Best Exclusive should have been probably that um like stand by your reviews and stuff yeah or an indie game i mean that yeah. would make a lot more sense than well it also like shows that i think the real article should have been sony has no games this year right but no they're not gonna write that they're gonna give it to hey great job of hiring a third party right d- or uh, out or outsourcing your best game to somebody else and then ha- then dumping it back into the system yeah. and winning another award for it yeah, like I, mean, and I'm, I think it's great that people that miss um, Last of Us or any type of game, any type of great game, like the Halo games or Last of Us or anything, they have a chance to play it again. I think that's great. Like, I understand why people don't like the re-releases because sometimes they're force-fed and maybe they're not even necessary. But they shouldn't. They shouldn't be in contention for any kind of game of the year or any kind of award. Yeah, yeah. Have I, a best. Have a best remake. I do. Award. Th- I, I do think that. Uh, luckily. No one takes them seriously anymore. Like I don't think people I know. care. I, think what, it just hits, I don't think people care what IGN says. I think says it just hits so, so hard because IGN, when I was 18, 17, like I think you introduced me to um, IGN. You and Chris Toledo. So, it's okay. Yeah, just making sure it smelled right. Oh, what does it smell? Smell funny? Mm. Tastes delicious. <laughs> oh, okay. But like I think you and Chris Toledo shared an IGN. Was it yeah. Prime at the time, or what was it called? Uh, in, I don't know, Insider. I don't remember what it was called. Was it AIGN but... Insider? You guys shared. Yeah. You paid, like, what was it, $25 a year? Yeah, I had it for a year, and then him... It was actually, we split it three ways. It was him and... um, the fuck is his name? Uh, uh, Rocco? Uh, Matt, Matt Rocco? Matt Rocco? Yeah. Matt Rocco, yeah. So our, our login name was... Um, was... Uh, po- uh, Rock... Uh, fuck, Rock a Potipus? Rock a... Rocket, Rocket Dorito. <laughs> it was something ridiculous. <laughs> it was like the three of our names. So I mean, I've seen like. I... By the way, that was the dumbest thing ever. But you, it was cool at the time yeah. because it wasn't like now where every story so, leaks in five seconds. Like you actually got like I mean, think about inside it. For, like, looks at stuff. Thirteen years, twelve years, we've been reading IGN, looking at IGN, and now when you go on IGN, when you finish an article of the of the the three lines that they they consider an article, it just says the. Our, uh, the writer's name and this says he's a freelancer at IGN. There's yep. no character left at IGN. Yeah, and it's all comments. And the, the only it's reason that I and then they just the only reason that I go them. to IGN now is because they still have crazy insider yeah. access. They just do. But it's getting funny because I, I eventually it's to me it's just a habit. Like IGN's always been one of the first pages I have checked for over a decade. But um, it's 
probably it it does do a good job of like I want to see all the breaking news. That's where I go. You know, you can go to a site like Polygon or something. They don't have every news story. They do have They're, most of them. Polygon but it's just too pretentious for me. Uh, it, it, it's it's bad in its own way. I think at least that they have original opinions with thought in their articles. They have long articles. I, I like Polygon. Yeah, I like the long uh, Some of their shit um, is I don't agree with, but and they're obsessed with the girl, like the girl, uh, anti-girl gaming fuck. stuff, which is just like every day fuck, with those shit. Fuck girls. Get back in the kitchen. <laughs> Laurel, don't kill Adam. <laughs> um, don't put me to sleep like you killed your rooster. Seriously. Um, but, you know, so I, I like that side of the gaming industry but the reason i go to ign is because it has all of the news and i can check it quick and see the headlines and then usually if i see something that i'm interested in i go check it out someplace yeah. else and they like we said they have the first looks they had all the halo stuff before anybody else because they're the most popular website but somebody made a good point they're not even getting that good at that anymore no they're not it's they're it's, it's great terrible. when they have the ign first stuff where they show videos before anybody else does that's cool you know yeah. it's, that's value but obviously they're paying for it i'm sure but um, somebody made a good point. Like you can go to Reddit video game site and people will laugh because IGN will break a story like five days after everyone else saw yeah. it, like a leaked trailer from an unreleased game. And like, it was available like a month ago. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's like, not, it's not that hard. If you're one of these freelance writers, just go to Reddit and then steal shit. Yes. It, nobody owns the, you know what I mean? It, what I think is happening is like, you see like these Twitchers or, and uh, YouTube people are like making millions of dollars a year. And they're making that they're making money playing video games and talking about video games, and they're selling their personality. There's websites out there that are trying to do this. Giant Bomb has done this for a while. I think Giant Bomb's the best. I think they took a major blow losing Patrick Klepek, who is probably one of the best like news people. He went to Kotaku, which I don't really ever go to. I don't really like Kotaku. But, I, the only thing that, I like about Kotaku is, as I said before, is the rating system. Yeah, they have buy it, don't buy it. That's it. Yeah, but, and and they have like the articles, so people don't get into like. You gave it an eight point seven instead of a nine point oh. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, now, that's, I love that, that rating system. Now that Patrick Klepek is at Kotaku, I might check it out a little more. But anyways, like what we see is there's personalities and it's a it's a new form of media. Now these websites they're doing that, but they're not they're not treating their their people as personalities. They're still treating them as journalism, but they're they're not selling. They should be selling them as personalities and having those people that are watching like was it PewDiePie or whatever right. his fucking name is. Uh, like, sell your, um, your, your journalists like that. Make them the personalities. Well, like, it's, it's funny because every time you go to IGN or GameSpot, every single time, yeah. there's one large window that's a video a little bit below the headlines, and it's the semi-attractive chick that does her yeah. uh, story, which she's not, I, very, she's not I, very attractive I don't think she has She's not very... Well, she's less attractive on GameSpot. I've ever seen that one, but... Oh, no. Uh, not good. It looks like a wife of one of my brother's friends from mentioned, but that's beside the point. Um, Where was I going with this, though? The point is, yeah, like, that's the only personality that they're putting out there, and it's like... I Like, the IGN girl, she's fine. Like, I don't mind her, but, like, she doesn't have any interesting things to say, no. in my opinion, about she's the game. A script. Right, so, like, show me... And... and this all comes back to something that sucks in general. It's that this Twitter f- fast news world that we live in now doesn't allow for really good journalism in a lot of ways. Like I always like as a New York Jets fan, like the New York media in general for all the sports is so bad. They just they're like TMZ reporters. They just post like headlines that are clickbait with stories about one thing that a coach said at a press conference because if you don't break the story first, no one goes to your website. Yeah. And that's the problem because you can't wait for people to write a long form article. Like I, one of my favorite websites is Ars Technica because they don't give a shit when they, they don't break anything. That's not their style. Instead of, they always say instead of a mile wide and an inch deep, uh, you know, they're an inch wide and a mile deep. They always yeah. try to take articles and like write really interesting things about them. That takes time. So the, their game reviews will come out like three weeks later or maybe not that long, but you know, weeks later than everybody else or a week later than everybody else. Uh, and I don't really go there for game news, but it's more about, um, tech and stuff. But point being is it's hard to live. Like Ars Technica has made a really nice niche for themselves and that's not an easy place to be anymore. You know, and who, who is the, who is the Ars Technica of video games, I guess. Jesus. I don't know. You know, because that, I don't think they really, Polygon, Polygon's kind of, I think they're trying to be Kotaku. I don't know. Is Polygon owned by the Verge, right? They're owned by, they're, they're, they're same company. Fox Media owns both of them. Right, because I think I, and I think they like actually talk about like how Polygon's their yeah. video game site. There is a I think there was a Ars Technica gaming 
spinoff. Yeah, oppos- oh no, that's just opposable thumbs. That's that's still our stack. Like I don't know, but anyway. Um, point, but you know what I'm trying to say. I think that there is for the smart fans out there, and you're not you're not gonna make money like IGN because you're not gonna get a million. There's too many stupid people that just wanna get into a fanboy war. But I think that there's a big space for a thorough, detailed look at video games. Maybe it's out there. And if you if you guys know what's out there, let us know. Yeah, I don't I don't really know anything about Kotaku. Like I, 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 feel, I feel like the industry has changed so much since I remember when we used to look at stuff, there was no videos. It was just I don't know, like three pages of text and you read it and you looked at pictures. But now like the industry has changed so much they want to watch people everybody wants to watch people play video games. Like I like doing that. Giant Bomb, I like watching some it's of the It's another games. interesting thing too. Are videos good or bad for the gaming industry? Because a lot of people expect every review to be a video review mm-hmm. now where do you get as much out of a video review and I don't and, know. and do they spread themselves thin doing an article and a video review uh, IGN you know what I'm trying to IGN say IGN fought video reviews for a long they time did. and then they finally just like they do them they still have their reviews are still decently long but oh, they're oh. they're like not what they used to no, be no they used to be four or five six pages yeah. for big games another thing that I love is but on the flip side of what I just said was one of my favorite video game sites is GameTrailers.com, and they invented the video review. Maybe not invented it, but they made it like popular because they came out. They they didn't have any articles; they only had videos, and it was really cool, especially at the time when it wasn't done. And now they actually have a text review and a video, and the text is the exact same thing they yeah, say in the video. Yeah, that's what which say. Is interesting. IGN does that too. Yeah, which I don't blame them because when you're vi- when you're reviewing fifty games, mm-hmm. uh, you know it's tough, but. It's a, it's, it's, it's definitely all connected to like when we were kids, I used to have, um, it was EGM, the magazine. Yeah. I used to have the EGM and the I was, Xbox magazine yeah, I was as official. well. I was both of those. And I used to go, I remember I used to go to game spots for a long time. I didn't have the EGM. Like what when was, I was the a, other one? I don't even remember. But when I was a really little kid, I didn't have the EGM membership, but I used to go to game, uh, or, um, Electronics Boutique in the Crossgates, and I used to just sit there on the floor and flip through the magazine, and it was like the best thing yeah. ever. And the craziest part about it was they broke stories. The, the articles had been written two weeks ago, yeah. and they still broke stories because they didn't have the internet. Like, I mean, the internet existed, but it didn't. It wasn't like it is now, and it was so much more fun that way. And like when you got your Xbox Live uh, or your, your official Xbox magazine, um, you know demo cd and it had like all the demos you couldn't get anywhere else you couldn't download them anywhere you had to get them on there i still ha- i followed all those the other day i was like I oh my god sh- the good I think, times i man. think we sent some of them out in sloppy boxes oh uh, we might have yeah. yeah um but that was really cool because you know it bring the world together you know there's a whole different argument about how the internet's affected social um statures whatever like you know everything but it was really neat having stuff come out in print form where people had time to yeah. th- organize their thoughts, write really interesting articles. And like, you know, EGM would break a story about, um, you know, there's this game World of Warcraft coming out and we've got the five page exclusive and no one would know about it until the magazine came out. Like, that's really cool. I think, I think we took them down in this podcast room, but we, we had the throwback. We had old, um, EGM articles, plastered on the wall yeah that's right we did just because i mean that's just what we knew and it's just so sad to see actually i don't know if it's sad but it's sad to see that it's just changing so quickly and they just don't give a fuck and and without without the change um you wouldn't have podcasts you wouldn't have giant bomb you know so it's good and bad uh but i do miss like grantland as much as i can't stand bill simmons there's a lot of good writers on Grantland. And that's the the sporting website that he created with a bunch of other guys, and they're really awesome. It's an awesome site because they are long form articles that have a lot of research and depth. It's like mm-hmm. the sports journalism of old days. Like when I used to be a big baseball fan, you know, Peter Gammons used to do these amazing articles where he had to talk to 50 people yeah. and now you got rich samini who just fucking he literally i swear to god i'm a massive jets fan i've followed him for 10 years because he was the new york daily news writer now he's he doesn't have a single source inside the jets like it's amazing to me that he has a fucking <laughs> job i can't believe it he literally will follow the tweets of like Schefter and things yeah. break stories after them and then write about one thing rex ryan said it's like 
this guy probably gets paid six figures to fucking do it. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. It's, it, it's crazy to see what Jeff Gersman, because Jeff Gersman, after that fucking Kane Lynch thing, just swore off the like the way the the industry was. Him and Ryan Davis just created Giant Bomb. They just wanted to play, make videos of them playing video games, sell their personalities. And now it's so weird to see the industry like four or five years later just realizing this is where they're going to make money and they don't want to be journalism anymore. <clears throat> they don't want to be journalists anymore. Question two, f- where, uh, where are we on time? 45. Okay, yeah, because because uh, that's a good segue into uh, Game Over Greggy and yeah. Kyle Moriarty leaving IGN. Yeah, and this and is, and this is they, what I- for, for the record, though, before we... Um, I, this they didn't leave IGN because of journalistic integrity. No, they left IGN because they knew they could make they see money. PewDiePie yeah. making a million dollars. That's what it is. Yeah, which, and that's why. I'm, which that's... I, I'm not insulting them no. uh, at all because I would do Kudos. the same that thing. That takes balls to do something. like that. I think that. it's awesome, especially that the way the everything changes. Like Twitch and I don't you think Twitch stay, is going anywhere. But, no, but you got to stay ahead of the game. Yeah, yeah. they have their new um, thing where you you basically. Uh, pay a little bit of money and you don't have to, yeah, but you Patreon. get you get stuff like was it Patreon? Yeah, and you get stuff a little bit early. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's their master plan. Yeah, um, and they they ask, and YouTube visits obviously. They, they have their Twitch set up where you can subscribe for a certain amount of money. You get a, like alerts. You get whatever. You can donate to them. Like mm-hmm. the donating thing in Twitch, uh, that blows my mind because I've watched Twitch streams where people are like, this guy's just walking around in Daisy, and some dude just gives fifteen dollars. Like, what right. the fuck are you doing? Right. What? 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 Just go play the game. Yeah. Like, like I get it if you're watching an amazing. A uh, Hearthstone player building uh-huh. a deck, and you thank him for spending his time doing that. But if you're just watching some random dude play a game, just mm-hmm. go play the game. And that's what that's what like like we to be perfectly honest, we would love to make money off this. It would be awesome. Like we like what we do, and to be rewarded for it is awesome. That's what everybody wants to do. It's just yep. the way life is. And podcasts are tough, and it everybody is. knows that. There's only. Of all the podcasts, you have including to. Game Over Greggies and shit, there's very few. Yeah. I don't even know if they make money off that. What they do is they, they create a they brand name. Yeah, they do. Well, I'm sure. Yeah, they I, might. Oh, I, the I should. I should change my um people pay statement. For... They they don't make a ton of uh, they don't make a ton of money off their yeah. podcast. And even like the Adam Carolla show, he even admits I don't. He says it yeah. all the time, right? I don't make a ton of money off this. Um, but it it, it it creates your brand, yeah. and when you go to YouTube, that's where maybe you make your money. Yeah. Maybe you make it with appearances, whatever the case may be. But uh, you know, we've had offers to do advertising, but we don't want to do that until it's like if there's a certain there's a there's a number where we'll take it, but we don't want to do that and have to answer to some because you do you have to answer your advertisers. Full disclosure: we've made three cents on this podcast so far. Like if we weren't including what we put into it. We've made no money. We're yeah. still in the well. Hole. That's and the only but reason we made, is, we made three cents off. Right, the only reason is we just turned advertising on our yeah. YouTube page. But um, like, uh, it, we just started it, so yeah. we'll see if that ever you know turns into anything. But, but like, we actually what? we actually enjoy the YouTube video making part yeah. of it because it's really fun. Like I understand why people want try to make businesses out of it. Yeah, I still not one hundred percent sure why people watch it all the time instead of playing video games. There's some videos. I'm a huge Giant Bomb fan. They're my site. I like watching them play video games, but I don't like watching them play video games of games that I'm going to play. I like watching them play PC games that I'll never try, or or um, mobile games, or imported games, or old games I'll never I'll never mm-hmm. get to play. That's fun. I like their personalities. So I don't like I I don't know. And the, what I was going to try to get at was before with um like the video sites need to pay these people like their personalities not journalists why didn't IGN and them offer um Colin and Greg like $500,000 or give them a contract stay cuz look at the money that PewDiePie I don't know, maybe they're make those guys their um their Patreon is going it's like worth over like $200,000 a year yeah uh it's tough because and that's just on one one of their Patreons they have multiple ones set up well because because number one, I don't think that they bring in five hundred thousand to IGN. You don't think so? You, they you don't think they can keep those people there? Uh, I don't. I think IGN's gonna take a hit without Greg Miller. Oh, it def it definitely is. I I think what I'm saying is I think there there's a reason that IGN has gone massive um, freelance writers as of lately. I think that their margins are razor thin, like mm-hmm. a restaurant, and I don't think that they can afford to pay guys multiple hundred thousand dollars a year. I don't greedy. think could be could be both. Um, but 
Yeah, I, I'm not sure that they have. I don't want to say that they have the money because they obviously have the money, but I, I'm I'm not sure that um, they want to get into something where they have to pay guys like that, you know, big money. Yeah, but I think that's because, direct- and I think I think the other thing, the flip I think side that's the of that too, this industry is going though. Well, I think the flip side of that too is they think that their brand's so big, nothing can stop them, and that could be true because uh, it, as bad as their journalism gets we both still check ign why yeah because it's ign it's the same thing with espn i fucking hate espn and i go there all the time because yeah. it's got the late breaking stories it's got the i don't have any place for news anymore since patrick kleptic left on uh, giant bomb yeah that yeah that's my one thing and it's tough you know you want to see like you know i like polygon because i think they have interesting takes on things sometimes um sometimes i think they're really stupid takes on things but it's still interesting yeah but Polygon doesn't have every single story that's going on. IGN has every single story that's going on for the most part. Mm-hmm. And that's important to me. And, and not only that, but like I, I like Reddit and I, I go to Reddit sometimes, but Reddit's pretty ugly. I like the IGN looks nice. Yeah. Like it, it matters to well, me. Well, Reddit, Reddit, the Reddit gaming news is tough because a lot of shit just gets drowned and people, people are just in the biggest insane. problem with Reddit that I have is that it's like if you post a funny a picture big story, with a good a tagline, yeah. it goes like the top of the page. I don't give a shit about that GIF file. Like I don't yeah. care about that picture. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, and that, that's the also the best part of Reddit is it's the wild wild also, west. Whatever people like goes to the you, top. If you don't like the way Reddit looks, get a good Reddit mobile app, and it just changes everything. Like, yeah, no, I, I could I could see that. I don't like going to Reddit on my phone or uh, off my phone. I just don't do it. And Reddit. it's funny because Reddit, um, because I've actually read up on this before. Reddit is really technologically kind of amazing the way that they've done things on the on the back end but it's it's almost like they take pride in making it ugly on the front end it's to me it's like Craigslist Craigslist is the ugliest website on the planet it looks like uh, it looks an like angel you, domain. You what, are they, what, what, what are those called? Angel Fire. It looks like an Angel Fire website Jesus. from 1990. Geo Cities. Geo Cities. Yeah, same thing. Like, like they, but it's the best. It kills everything else, you know. Um, and then sometimes it kills people. Sometimes people <laughs> die, <laughs> but you know, usually they're hookers. So, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited for the. I I like Colin Moriarty and I like Greg Miller. I like Colin Moriarty way more than I like Greg Miller. He, I don't get the Greg Miller thing. I, I get and, it because he's just friendly. He's charismatic. Right. And, and he's, he's done an amazing job of selling himself. Oh, he has. And make, I, I don't creating like if you want to watch somebody <clears throat> create them, make themselves a brand. Like I've listened to podcasts beyond for six, seven years. The way he transitioned himself into a brand is just yeah, and it's he's smart. And two things. Number one, I've said this to you before. If he if he didn't come up with a nickname or somebody came up with a nickname, Game Over Greggy, he would be half as popular yeah. as he is. I think that was brilliant. But the thing is, I don't dislike him. I actually, I enjoy listening to him. Yeah. I just don't get why he's as popular. He never says he anything just, interesting to me. He just hits that audience. Yeah, like, but do, do you understand for, what I'm yeah. saying, though? He never says anything interesting to me. Kyle Moriarty has, I think, unique um, opinions on things. I find myself agreeing with him a lot. Mm-hmm. I don't listen to that podcast a lot, but I've seen the videos on the website and stuff. Greg Miller, to me, is just kind of like the clown that's like, we. I guess that's what people like about him. Uh, I just can't believe that a guy like that has turned into what he's turned into and it's and i'm not i'm not dissing him because i like no, him yeah. i just don't no, I, get why he's a superstar you know yeah and he i'm sure he 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 has them he like if you follow him on twitter he asks that all the time like how did he get here yeah because i'm i just like i just don't i don't get how people who don't have a unique look on something get to be that big you yeah, know and I, I like greg a lot i've listened to his podcast my podcast catcher doesn't do a good job of grabbing the game, the game over Greggy show for some reason. Yeah. So I don't really listen that often. And they need to adjust their fucking video, their file sizes. The podcast will be like an hour and 15 minutes and it's like 400 megs. Yeah. See, our, our quality. Like, what the fuck? I want to keep our quality doing? really high, but ours are uh, with a variable bit rate and everything with 256. Uh, it's like. 100 the max is like 150 yeah there's our huge and i've considered many times of decreasing yeah. the quality but i i like the fact that our sounds but really good without that being, being ridiculous said, i thought the the up at noon show with greg miller was fucking terrible it wasn't funny he always wore suits that are way too big for him this is with with greg miller yeah, the said. ign show and, th- and, that, and that's it just wasn't a good <laughs> show and that's it for me that's where i don't understand him to me he's not funny at all no i've it, never thought writing, he was funny i think he's very uh, jovial and I yeah. think he to, you know what he is to me and and this is another thing about him without Colin I don't think he ever would have been who he no, is I, Colin, and, I, and I think without Colin Greg would or without, without Greg, Greg absolutely because Colin can't yeah. carry himself because he's no. not like the guy he doesn't that can, want to that can brand himself no but um, what Greg Miller is is the perfect sidekick 
mm-hmm. and somehow the sidekicks become the superstar. Yeah. And that's that's what it is, right? Because Colin is the talent of mm-hmm. that duo, and Greg uh, somehow has become the brand name. Yeah, and but I think you're right, because I don't think Colin really gives a shit. He wants no. to say what he's going to say, and that's all he really cares about. Yeah, and God bless him. I mean, good, good for I, them. I think it's so cool what they did, just saying... I knew it was it, coming. We're leaving. I don't listen to any of their stuff, so I had no idea it was coming. But um, and IGN recycles their their older people so quickly. Like I don't think they would. I think they would have got rid of Colin. They wouldn't get rid of Greg. Yeah, I mean, it well, was, I mean, the thing that um, they're keeping be- the podcast beyond with for, them for now. For yeah, they're free. They haven't. They have a, Yeah, right. They have an exit time. They yeah. just won't say what it is. Yeah. So. Which That's they, cool. It sounds like it was... A, which as, they're only doing just not the, so they don't piss off the... Yeah, it, it sounds like about as amiable uh, a a divorce, I guess, as, um, yeah. as is possible. But I, th- I think it's... I think that what they're doing is going to be fascinating to follow for the next two years or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. Because Patreon's um, not guaranteed. It's month-to-month money. Right. They could have $120,000 a year you, and then it could drop down to thirty, And that's a big fucking I difference. I said to you, my opinion, I see them peaking over the next three, four, five, six months and then I see it falling off sharply. I don't understand how that could survive because they're not going to break any stories. They don't have any inside sources anymore because they lost the IGN brand. Um, so really you're just paying to see a video early of something that somebody else already broke mm-hmm. the story. I just don't see, and like, are their personalities I, that strong to they're, carry that? They're, Colin, they're not Howard Colin Stern. and Greg are, but the Nick Scarpino and uh, Tim Gettys thing, Greg. they're only there because of their friendship with well, the that, other and, two. Right, and that, that was another confusing thing to me. Like, I like Nick Scarpino, but Tim Getty is like, he's just, he's just your average white guy. That, that was another thing that confused me. Why bring those guys along? They've got. It's like, they it's add like, Who's coming with me? Right, <laughs> the, and then they've got like a producer. Because don't forget too, when they get, you know, yeah, let's they say they're taking had, in two hundred grand. Right, you've yeah. got your producer, uh, film, whatever you want to call them, guy, and two more co-hosts. And I'm sure that those guys are not getting paid what Greg Miller and Colin are, obviously, but they're still getting paid enough to leave their job. Yeah. So, call that fifty grand each. They get the rest. In, let's call in it San Francisco. Yeah, I mean. It's a big risk. It is. Maybe they're. Pl- I would love. I would love to have them on the podcast and talk about what their money strategy was because they're they're smart guys. I'm sure they've thought about not just like, hey, we could be popular. I'm sure they've thought this is how we're gonna have a money stream. We're gonna do it this website, this website. I'm sure they want to make their YouTube page huge because you can get a yeah. lot of hits there. Uh, I'd love to know what they think. Maybe this is all just to get a humongous YouTube following yeah. and then try to well, you know make thing six hundred like, grand a year off they that. They Twitch. They have the Colin and Greg show, I think they call it. Yeah, they, they got like three different shows. Every Monday through Friday or Monday through right. Thursday at 11 in the morning. That's a lot of fucking twitching. Yeah. And you would think Pete and like who watches that right. shit? And they, who can watch this <clears throat> shit? And who has money it, to pay for them like, to watch this that shit? Was the, that was the thing that I laughed at the most when I listened to – I didn't listen to much, but I, I wanted to hear their plan because I'm yeah. very interested in this. Um, and the thing that I thought was the most ridiculous was they said, we're going to do this Monday through Friday. We're going to do 11, 10, whatever the hell it was live show. Basically it's going to be the sports center of video games. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, that's great. Except nothing happened last night that we need to hear about. Like the whole reason that sports center works every single day is because there's stories, there's games, there's, uh, you know, there's conclusions to games, there's, um, firings, there's hirings. That doesn't happen in the gaming industry every day because imagine – how about this? Imagine if Sports Center couldn't show any games that occurred. Mm-hmm. They just had to talk about news in the sports industry. It would be a half-hour show Yeah. at the most, right? I mean most of the time nothing happens. And They're showing – the you know the Lakers play the uh, Cavs. They're showing the Rangers play the Kings. They're showing like live games. Well, the esports industry isn't such that there's 50 games a night right now. So to me, a Monday through Friday live show is nobody's. It's like something that nobody's asking and, for. And the well, the well's got to dry up eventually. And I mean, who's watching at 11 a.m.? And who's just is somebody going to go on there and donate 10 bucks every every morning? Right. It's weird. It, it, and to, another thing, I think they took a big risk. I think and the thing is, it's not that big of a risk because they can always get another job with another gaming yeah. industry. I'm and sure. Like, but the, the thing is, uh, the big, the giant out there is no pun intended. Giant Bomb. Giant Bomb does exactly what they do, except for right. the twitching. And Giant Bomb is huge. If you go on any kind of like um, podcast thing, Giant Bomb, like IGN or iTunes, of overall podcast, Giant Bomb podcast might be in the top ten. Overall, everything is always number right. one. 
Uh, and, because uh, also that's their and their videos that's are, their money maker. Their videos are huge. They're right. well done. Because they, they don't have, have any. They have their live they, show every Friday. And, and they the have their reason is thing. they got ahead of everybody because they said we're not gonna write any articles. Yeah. That's old school. And as I hate the fact that it's old school, but it's true. Um, and this is like five yeah. years ago, and they said, you know, we're gonna do videos and podcasts, right. and, and now everybody's trying to catch up, is, and it's so hard to catch up. And the thing up. is, they were independent. Like it was them because they didn't want to be bought, and right. eventually they they right they sold. They, that's the thing. So I want they, I want to know how what happened. Well, that's interesting because they did what Greg and Colin yeah, did. Yeah, they did, they did but, exactly. But, and, but, but they made but it. But they did it before. Well, they did it with way more risk, way yeah. more risk because they were not the brand that they, they were. were. They had to make something unique when they left. And they, Greg and Colin are to me, depending way too much on their brand name where Giant Bomb wasn't a brand name until they fucking made it a brand name and, kind and they of, did something really they, unique they're going under kind of funny like yeah I, I hate yeah that's awful to me yeah I don't get it I, don't I get watch it. their podcast too, and they, like, they think they're so funny we're like it's so funny too because like they're like drinking on the air like us now but like they think it's like the coolest thing ever like yeah. I only watched like a little bit of their first their first episode which is because I wanted to see how what you know their thoughts were on leaving but like there was at least five, seven times, ten times where they, like, had their producer fa- camera guy go, like, get them drinks and, like, mm-hmm. a bucket of ice and, like, they thought it was the coolest thing ever. I guess maybe it is for them because they're so used to being under the yeah, I think, I conservative think blanket I think of IGN. It's probably going to be. It's probably freeing. Yeah. Uh, and, and they were, like, so excited that they could curse and all that stuff, um, which, you know, I get as well. But I got to tell you, it doesn't, it doesn't fit them to – Booze and curse on their podcast. That's that's they used to, to curse me, on um podcast. I don't know. Yeah. See, the thing is, I'm so torn with them. I, I I just find it. I found it like these are really nerdy guys yeah. trying to be cool. Like that's I'm I'm not I, like trying to be a douche, but I'm like just, that's what it it felt to me like it was fabricated. Like I'm look s- at us, we can swear and drink. I'm just now. so in the middle because I love podcast beyond. I listened to podcast beyond before I bought a PS3. I loved it with like Chris Rover, uh, Roper, Jeff, or. Uh, um, Jeremy Dunham, Greg Miller, uh, Ryan Clements, and when Colin was just like a temp, or he was writing facts or something like that, and he would come on every now and then. Like, I just loved it. I love podcasts beyond. I love those two on it. But when I listen to Grandma, the Game Over Greggy show, I just don't, it just doesn't hook me like the way I thought well, it would. Well, and that's me. the other thing, too, is it's like, how many shows can you have? And I'm a like, big guy. How many, how many unique thoughts can you have when you have five days a week, one show, uh, one day a week, two other shows? It's yeah. like, that's like 10 hours of content mm-hmm. where you're probably only playing 10 hours of video games. So you know, it's like how, you can't turn every minute of video game you play into a minute of uh, talking on the air. And it doesn't if, make um, any sense. If you guys are Game Over Greggy or Colin, super fans, don't think that we're talking down about them. We want them to see. No, we think it's awesome I think it's ballsy and crazy. I think what it's they cool did. as shit. But it's, I still think it's going to work. It's scary as fuck. Yeah, I, still I, think it's I work. want the best for them. That it's just it's. I love. I think Colin is a really. Could you imagine just quitting our, our jobs and be like, "Hey, we're just gonna go for it"? No. That's, I mean, obviously, it's different because it's fucking, they have a they have a brand name. The, it's fucking insane. They're guaranteed. Call it two hundred grand this yeah, year. Well, you know yeah, what I mean? They said they're guaranteed one year of success. Yeah, and, I, and I'm talking that's like a low number. They're probably guaranteed like four hundred grand between yeah. the four of them, five of them. Um, but that's not. You know, you split it five ways. Uh, is that yeah, any more than they're making with uh, Patreon, IGN? Patreon takes a percentage of that. Yeah. Is that any more than they're making with IGN? Probably not. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're probably taking a pay cut, but that's normally the way things go. And, you know, the Giant Bomb people took a pay cut. They probably went from making 60 grand to making zero. <laughs> so yeah, I think was... literally zero. Like the IGN guys, they already had the Patreon thing made and like they knew that they were going to be okay. Uh, I'm just interested to see if my guess, my prediction – I don't know about one year, but two years. Uh, Colin and Greg work for um, some sort of major. I would love this. I, game. I would love to see Greg, uh, Greg on Giant Bomb. Yeah, that, I don't know if Colin would be great. fit because they have Dan Reichard, but Greg on Giant Bomb would be so good. And they would use him the way they need to use him. Yeah. See, for me though, I just don't like. And I totally, I like. I said, I get the allure of Greg. But I would never follow him anywhere. If him and Colin split. I would go follow like, and yeah. I, I don't listen to podcasts anyway. But like, if I did, um, I would listen to Collins because I think he is a really interesting I just, dude. Yeah, I just think there's there's such opposites that they they just gel that's why together. they work together. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. but you know what I'm saying. I think if if they the talent is Colin, and as we said, I think Greg's done great things for Collins' career, mm-hmm. and I think Collins done great things for Greg's career. But uh, 
at the end of the day, Colin would run a extremely dry podcast without Greg, but to, it he, would at least be interesting. He had where, he had a political podcast for a little while. It does it, not surprise me. It was the driest yeah. thing ever. But Greg, if he ran his own podcast, like what's the one that you don't like? Uh, Game over Greg show. Game over Greg's show. No, I, I like. I'm just not sold on it yet. To me, the Game over Greg show is pro. Is Colin on that at all? Yeah, the, all four of them. Are. Oh, they are. Okay, I haven't listened to it, but to me, like if 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 he had his own show. It would just be like his whole shtick is riffing off of smarter people's yeah. opinions of games, and he makes jokes. And he seems like a great like I'd love to have a drink with Game Over Greggy, but like yeah. if he had to carry his own show, he couldn't do it because he doesn't have. The, I, yeah, like, he no, doesn't yeah, have the show. The I didn't like was Up at Noon. That's what it is. Up at Noon. Never liked it because he he can't carry his own show, and you know I guess not many people can, but, but you know people, what I'm trying to say. People, I mean, I mean, be the uh, person in like show, but a lot of people like the show. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I just, I, that's what I don't get. And I, like I said, I get that he's like a nice guy and he's, and I like him. I'm not saying I don't like him. I just don't see the talent to the popularity combination, I guess yeah. is my point. Um, we'll see. It'll be interesting we'll see. following this year. Hey, we're, listen, we're rooting for him. I, 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 I think yeah, it's I so cool. The best. I think it's so cool what they're doing. And are we jealous of the money they're making? Yes. Yeah. But I mean, that's the case uh, when they were at IGN. That has nothing to do with the move, <laughs> yeah. you know? Uh, they, they got paid six figures to, to review video games. Um, God bless them. But yeah, the whole thing with IGN, like I actually thought when I left my last job, when I was, you know, thinking about getting in the tech industry, I actually thought about like applying to IGN stuff. Then I just saw like, it's all, I don't want to be a freelance writer for IGN. That sounds fucking terrible. Like if I want to get involved, I want to be in a office go into the game shows and i know that still exists but it's a it's a much smaller part I of think, what IGN i think i think the people that if if you're if you're in college or freshman college and you want to work for an ign or giant bomb or anything you need to build personality start a podcast create yourself a brand like uh, yep. greg miller did they you look at ign ign has no personality anymore no they don't like i mean, I, I listen to other, other podcasts and they're just not good let me ask you a question. If I get a job at IGN someday, do I end up banging Ni- uh, Naomi, Naomi Campbell? Campbell? That's not Naomi Campbell. Naomi Kyle. Naomi Kyle. I think Naomi Campbell. What do you think? What, what do you think my, you think my odds are? Oh, you just got to pop that thing on her face with your, with your dick. <laughs> uh, I don't know. 100% probably. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I mean it, it, there can't be much competition within the office. <laughs> no. I guess that's where I'm getting at. No, no, no competition whatsoever. Greg Miller probably banged her, that motherfucker. No, I think he's been with the same chick for a while. Is he married? No, he's divorced, but he's got another chick. He's divorced? That's shocking to me. I, I guess yeah, it's just he's I, such that's a, funny. When I first started listening to he's such a baby on, he was married. He's such a baby face. I guess he just looks young, you know, and he's probably... I think he's only like a year or two older than us. Is he? Colin's the same age as us. Yeah, Colin looks young. I figure I figure game over Greggy, though, just because I feel like he's been around forever. It was probably like five years older than us. No, I think he's only like 31, 32. God bless him. He's already divorced. Ugh, that sucks. That, and that was like six years ago. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, shocker that you got he's, a he's, he's, he's a Midwest boy. He was went to yeah. school. Well, it's funny, you know, it's married. like, I mean, my parents got married when they were like 21, but that was 50 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a different time. It wasn't literally 50 years ago. All right, so we want to get out of here? Uh, sure. I don't even know what All time right, we're follow at. Follow us. Follow, follow, uh, kind of funny. Um. I don't know. Fuck kind of funny. Sup- Follow us. Support just support the media that you like because there's so many good choices out there. The variety is there. You're not forced to go to IGN anymore to get your news or get your entertainment. I think I might subscribe to a video game magazine. I think that might be fun. There's maybe that's what's all about now. Do any do any exist anymore? Somebody there is like an indie one. Yeah, be, I think it. I think you might be able to subscribe to it on Kickstarter. It'd be interesting because the whole idea is. I think EGM is back too, by the way. Oh, I would love to get. But back But it's not it. like the same people. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, it would just be interesting to get just back get into game, it because Game Informer. Because they have to, yeah, they have to write the articles ahead of time, so they have to put more thought into them. Because if they want to pull fans, they have. To, it's it, it's not about breaking the story, like Adam Schefter. It's about writing something unique. Yeah. So maybe it'd be cool. I don't know. When this is all said and done, not just the game, the Game Over Greg thing. In twenty years, I would love to see a documentary about the gaming interest or the gaming journalism industry. How much has this changed? You know. Yeah. See, to me though, I think the gaming uh, gaming journalism is exactly the same as sports journalism, almost exactly the same as news journalism. I think they're all going the same direction at the same yeah, but time. The only my only difference is I think the the sports people take themselves more seriously and they handle themselves a little better. 
Yeah, that is true. Uh, because it's more popular. Yeah. But it, that that gap is cl- like, almost I don't know. basically maybe, closed maybe at this point. Maybe it's the way like the way I or they have been more popular. I should say. Like, I for feel the like last I years. wouldn't be like them if I did. I would be. I mean, it might be really easy to fall into it once you're in that environment. But if you want to be a journalist, you want to write about video games or something. I don't yeah. Know. It they is just, funny they too. They seem like they're so I was, fucking out. I was I was like, about to say that maybe it's because the people in the gaming industry that make the games yeah. uh are a different breed of people. <laughs> then when I think of what the athletes are, that is not yeah. a that's not an argument that holds water. So yeah. Yeah. it really is the fact that sports are legit and video games aren't. That's what it is. Yeah. And um that's and obviously I, and that's and obviously when, changing, but it's not it has not and changed. As long as IGN and other websites continue to pin other pin their users or whatever you want to call them against each other and start fights and yeah get people to fucking throw racial slurs at each other over a fucking video game it's never gonna be taken yeah seriously. i mean video games really video game journalism for the most part i want to throw everybody in this appeals to 16 year olds that's what it's all about because they know that those are the people that will click on articles and fight about the resolution and uh sports does a fair bit of that, but it's not the same thing. No, it doesn't. Not. It's not quite you know the it's, same level of. It's sad because it's something that means a lot to me. Like as a thirty year old, it's tough to say that video games mean a lot to me. But you know, it's what I grew up with. It's what I know. Adam's thirty. This fucking sucks. You'll be thirty soon. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I love. I yeah, hope... but I gotta get enough out of the fact that I'm not thirty <laughs> until I'm thirty. So. Well, the good news is I never feel bad about my birthday because when I turn 30, jail turned 31 a week later. There you go. <laughs> Six days later. 30 hasn't been bad. I just forget about it. You get to the yeah. age where you're no, just No, I, I literally, shit. I have never, ever worried about my age. Yeah. When I hit 50, uh, that'll freak me out. Yeah. I think 50 uh, is going to be like our 30. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Considering the fact that we've bought a 175 of Makers for uh, the last two Favorite year. age ever, go. Uh, I think 25 is the sweet spot. I think you, your life will never get better than where you are at 25. I mean, my personal favorite year would probably be, I don't know, one of my first three years in New York. I, I, I can't even think. Like 25? 24, yeah. 25? Somewhere 22 to 25, somewhere in there. Um, maybe even 26, but somewhere in there. That's just my personal experience. You start, you start to get a little more distinguished. I mean, not maybe other people. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe other people. I'm not even listening. distinguished at 30. Yeah, no, I get a long ways for that. Yeah. Okay. But 40 doesn't freak me out either. 50 will freak me out. That's the first age where I'll I be like, I hope to have my first Holy kid shit, by 50. I'm old. Yeah, you'll have one by accident before then. I don't know. When in doubt, pull out. I feel like there's <laughs> another addition to that. I can't remember, though. Uh, uh yeah i got nothing follow our youtube page that's that's you know yeah. that's the only social two media new followers this week thanks guys yeah that's the only that's the only social media we're gonna put out there yeah we just started the youtube page not you know well we started a long time ago but we've actually added content only for like the last month or two there's actually a ton of shit on there now and we're gonna add stuff like all the time we should have an ftl so, there well, will be de- more on the there, youtube page than podcast the pt episodes. video i guarantee you guys will laugh you yeah that'll will be the best scared. one to check out it's funny and we'll tweet it's- it you get to hear us scream. Which and I guess I do just need to say how we don't want to play this game anymore. I guess I do. Are you about who's going to use the controller? Uh, no, it's embarrassing. Uh, yeah. So and we're, we're P- going to. And I think the FTL video will come up. That thing's a fucking monster. Yeah, it's like two hours. But if you, it, it's that's the whole point of FTL is you know grab some popcorn you know, and do lot, something yeah, else. Yeah, a lot of shit. A lot of shit. A lot of shit happens. It's not yeah. like a slow burn. But we will put that out on Twitter and Facebook. Ape Bourbon on Twitter. Facebook.com slash Ape Bourbon. <laughs> uh, but. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's yeah. that's that's going to be our new shit. And, and, and also the thing that we're not mentioning, which I don't think we've mentioned in a while, our Twitch? we put no we well yeah Ape Bourbon on Twitch as well. But we put all of our podcast episodes with video on YouTube now. Yes. So you could if you're a podcast, some people like video better. So you know you can see our sexy faces. We we were recording in the podcast uh, studio this week. Last week we were in my living your room. living room. The week before we my were in your bedroom. Back in the back <laughs> and, in the homeland. And that's that's a, the reason for that is because we twitch. We, we've uh, we, I, because when we do the twitch stuff, we need the laptops and the microphones, and it's just a whole process. If, if Andy lets me, I'm gonna buy a couple an Xbox, PS4. No, I'm not gonna let and, him uh, stuff so we can record in here. No, I'm not gonna let him. 
Such a bad idea. <laughs> I'll probably do it drunk. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like last night. Just I go, think about it. It'll be like fucking Christmas. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, listen, it'd be amazing. I just don't want you to waste your money. When, when I was coming over last night, I go, uh, I no, go. No, just give me that three cents and now just chip away at the that's fucking true. thing. That's true. How are we going to divvy that up? Uh, I, I get one Fight and a half. to the death. <laughs> well, who gets the extra set? Uh, you, you said to me when I was coming over last night, you go, um, you know, talk about whatever. I was like, I'll pick you up if you want to grab food quick. I blame you. And you were like, no. And I go, listen, you're going to order Domino's at 11 o'clock. I wasn't even thinking, you, you put it in my head, and it was 10, it was 10, 30, it was I had, 10 22 when I ordered it. I incepted you, is you what did. you're saying. Uh, all right, I got nothing else. Yeah. You got anything else? Thanks for listening. Support stuff you like. I think it's the most important thing. Absolutely. And if you follow like, your dreams, and I think if you have an idea and you believe in it, go for it. I think if Greg Miller taught everybody anything, it's lose weight and you'll get more popular. Yeah. I'm Andy. Or just, or just yell a lot. <laughs> right, right. He actually looked, I think he looked better, a little bit heavier. His skinny frame almost doesn't look right. Well, I think right. he had cancer. I think that had some. Did he? Yeah, he had. Oh, I didn't know that. Hopkins some or something like that. Yeah, well, he must have changed his diet because he's never put the uh, weight back on. Yeah, he had a little, I don't, yeah, I don't know. No, but he says he eats. He's he's that team fat. He what? He's team fat. He wears shirts to say he it's like his. So he's not fat anymore. I think he's a little, he's a little. I mean, he's, he's got that weird body. Yeah, that that's what I'm saying. He has a body that should be 20 pounds heavier. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it's that's he's also just, like six, it's kind of like it's kind of like, like six five. It's kind of like Turtle on Entourage. Mm-hmm. He doesn't look right in like yeah. the anorexic. Like he needs. To, I thought he. In I fact, bet you. I bet you. Greg Miller has Lena Dunham titties. Yeah, probably. That's fucking disgusting. They look like dog noses. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously though, I no no homo. I thought that Turtle was better looking when he was like twenty pounds heavier. Think Not so? when he was fat, like in season one, yeah. but like season four or five when he was like in between. He looks disgusting as young, so? as, as skinny as he is now. Yeah, it just doesn't look right. His frame is supposed to be heavier. Like Dan, my brother Dan was talking to me one time, and he goes. He goes, I, my, I want to get down to 175. That's my target weight. And I go, holy shit, you're going to be lighter than me for the first time ever. And he's like, yeah, but you're four inches tall and whatever. But I was like, yeah, but our body types are not the same. Yeah. Like, he's really like a wide, thick guy. You know what I mean? And I'm tall and thin. It's like some frames are meant to support more than others. So mm-hmm. anyway, I don't know how the hell we just got on that. How the, hell, how the hell do we get anywhere? <laughs> how the hell do we get to episode 59? I'm Andy. <laughs>